Yo. Hello, I'm Trishan Karthik Gopasami from Datadog. And I am Santiago Torresaria from Purdue University. And I'm Asar Ali from Google. And we're all here today to talk about the state of the art of uh, supply chain security. But first, uh, let's set a, a little background for the, uh, for, the, for the problem. Why are we all here talking about this? So at Datadog, we have the agent, which some of you may have installed. Um, it monitors your infrastructure, your apps, your logs, and so on. And there's, there's hundreds of integrations that come out of the box, right? It gives the agent extra superpowers, as it were, to measure even more stuff. And the problem we had was that we needed to uh, decouple releasing the agent separately uh, from the agent uh, because we wanted to be we wanted we wanted customers to be able to try new versions of the integrations, try bug fixes, and so on. And so, how do you how do you normally do this? Well, you use uh, CI/CD, as many of us do here, I suspect. Um, and so, there's a lot of benefits to using CI/CD. It's much less error prone than human beings in building, packaging, and 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 signing your software reliably. Um, and, and trusting this robot, as I like to call it, sitting on a cloud to do this for you. Well, and, 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 and so, but there, there, there are downsides. 99.999 whatever percent of the time, nothing can go wrong, everything is good, um, life is swell. The problem is that a million little different things can go wrong. So for example, your developer could have a key compromise or your VCS uh, could get compromised, uh, the source control uh, system or your CI CD itself could get compromised or the image registry you use to run your CI CD jobs or your key and file service that you use to store your artifacts and, and, and your signing keys. I think you get the idea. The point is that, like I said, a million little different things can go wrong. And the problem with this previous day of the art is, uh, you know, good old fashioned CI CD by itself is that there's no compromise resilience. One single attack and the whole game is over. It's an all or nothing proposition. proposition. So what we want to do is that we want compromise resilience. So, you know, it's probably impossible to build an impenetrable fortress, but what you can do is build layers of defense around it, defense in depth, as some of us call it. And um, so, for example, you could think of building your, your medieval castle here with layers of moat uh, surrounded by alligators and guys with flame throwers just for extra measure. So attackers look at your infrastructure and say, you know what, that's not worth my time. I'm going to go get this other easier target here. And so we have this idea that we, we, we would like to tell you about today, something that we call transparent compromise resilience, and it uses these three pieces of uh, open source technology. And so the first piece of technology is called Indoto, and that's the bit that, that secures your software supply chain from your developers down to all the way in, in your CI CD. The second piece of technology is called Tough, um, and it is the compromise resilient distribution of the, your software supply chains as well as the associated artifacts. And the third piece of technology is SigStore, which then gives you transparent compromise resilience. So you can, you can see the history of every single little thing, how every single little artifact you ever released was produced from end to end. Um, and, and people can even audit this stuff for you. And so the metaphor that we like to use, I hear vaccines are very popular these days. The metaphor we like to use to try to put this in more concrete terms is to say that in total is, is uh, the, the, the part that gives you supply chain security. So if we use vaccines, in total is like Pfizer and Moderna saying, hey, here's my signature saying, here's how much mRNA is in my vaccine, how much lipids I use, what sort of adjunct and who I bought it from, how it is all composed together. And so, you know that uh, you know how this vaccine is produced, right? And so the tough is a bit like the FDA saying why you should trust Pfizer or Moderna or j and or whoever else you have tomorrow in the first place. Um, and finally, uh, SigStore is kind of like the CDC, uh, the record uh, registry, keeping the history of how every single little vaccine was produced, what lot number, what expiration date, how it was produced from end to end from the moment that the ingredients were put together down to when it was recorded uh, on, on, on six door. And so, and now Santiago will take it away to talk about how Intoto works. Thank you, Trishank. So, as Trishank was talking about, uh, there's three components with uh, Intoto we're able to track everything with top we're able to distribute what we're tracking as well as the artifacts that we're protecting. 
and finally with sector we're able to transparently collect historical information about uh, everything that was produced in an ecosystem. So to take it from the top, uh, imagine that you're uh, maintaining a project and you're developing your application at home and you need to put it somewhere so other people can collaborate. So you would want to put the source code, but also information about the source code and how it was written and who wrote it um, into a place that's discoverable by people. Uh, with this, you're able to prevent uh, attackers from breaking in or modifying the source code or or targeting uh, particular pieces of, uh, of your distribution to, uh, to introduce malicious code. Um, now imagine that beyond that, you also wanted to include a CI/CD system to continuously build all of the source code that you've been writing. So what Toto takes care of is to creating evidence that tightly links together every single operation that you did in your pipeline. So that uh, when consumers are about to consume your software, they know that nothing was uh, performed uh, outside of uh, the specification and that everything has been performed to the letter by the right party and there hasn't been any tampering in between. So going back to the metaphor of, uh, of vaccine distribution, now imagine a pipeline that we may be very more familiar with, a physical pipeline that's uh, producing, I don't know, a, a little Go file, uh, mRNA.go, that uh, is taken into a manufacturer, a CITD system uh, in the cloud, maybe in GitLab, uh, and will be constantly uh, constantly updated and uh, remanufactured as new ingredients come available. Uh, that eventually uh, gets uh, into a vaccine rollout plan, like the like the ones that throughout many different countries, uh, to be put into a vaccine site for everybody to consume, and to then eventually put a selfie on Twitter to confirm to everybody uh, that they actually uh, took the the vaccine. Uh, to combat this pandemic. So in total in this way is a, a way to record keep all of the operations that were taken, that took place from the very first moment which you wrote the source code for mRNA.go all the way uh, to the selfie on Twitter. Um, that said, uh, in total what, what it ends up providing is this uh, property of software supply chain security. Uh, and I'll hand it back to Sean to talk about how with Intoto and TOF, you're able to communicate this information in a discoverable and uh, resilient way. Thank you. Thank you, Santiago. Um, yeah, so, so let's talk about the second piece of the puzzle, which is uh, compromised resilient distribution of the, um, of the software supply chains that Santiago was talking about, the Intoto supply chains. And, and, and so, so tough is the tough is you can think of it as a secure transport protocol that distributes uh, all of the supply chains as well as the artifacts. And so going back to the metaphor of vaccines, uh, again, uh, tough is like the FDA telling you, hey, why why should you trust Pfizer, Moderna, or GNG in the first place? And then you can go off and figure out their their separate rules for the supply chain and so on, right? But you have this one central root of trust, and from there you can bootstrap and and figure out your way through the rest of the system. So you can think of tough. We don't have time to go into all the details, but to give you a rough idea of how tough works, basically, we listen to grandma. She told us, we told grandma, we have this very tough problem of trying to solve uh, software updates from nation state attackers. And so we asked grandma for advice. And she gave us a few di different design principles that we then put together and call it the update framework. And one of them is separation of duties. Basically, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's it. Um, and other, other principles include things like consistent snapshots of things um, so that you know, people, attackers can do mix and match attacks, try to give you different package defenses that don't belong together. Uh, timeliness, are you getting the latest information? Uh, you have one key ring to, to rule them all, so to speak. Um, you have this one root key and you can figure out the key through the rest of the system. You can even slash and burn them, doesn't matter. You can always figure, figure out the latest keys from there. Um, cold storage keys. Um, I think that's what the crypto kids call it these days. Um, um, so you can use things like um, uh, keeping your keys in like nuclear proof bunkers somewhere in the Swiss, Swiss underground somewhere um, so that attackers can't get to it when they get to your infrastructure. Use two man rules. Um, grandma said always use you know, separation of keys. In fact, it's very interesting what they do. The keys are physically situation uh, far enough that you you can't one person cannot launch the the nuke at the same time so we use the same principle here you need two different keys at least um cryptographic agility 
uh, use different hashing and signing algorithms at the same time. So you hedge your bets. So even if one of them is broken, you're still okay. Hopefully the rest uh, have a different design. With apologies to the Nintendo Corporation, tough basically in a nutshell, it's a bit like playing Pokemon. You, you got to catch them all, right? Okay. So uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. And now Azra will talk to us about Sixtor. All right, so Sixter plays like a couple different roles in this uh, whole ecosystem. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what it does in general, and then we'll talk uh, how it works in the Datadog pipeline. So Sixter's main goal um, is to basically make a transparent uh, and easy to use way of supp uh, securing supply chain. So in the analogy that we have um, laid out before within Toto, Tough, and Sigstore, um, what it kind of plays in this whole pipeline is that it provides a place of discoverability on the end user for finding when those artifacts have been signed and sort of providing a like immutable history um, of signing events. Um, so let's say like, you know, for example, you might spin up a monitor and say, okay, I want to make sure and double check really just to keep myself, um, you know, up to date with everything that, you know, whoever I'm, I'm consuming artifacts from is actually signing when they need to. Um, so in without the SIG store piece, you kind of lose out on a history of records. Um, and with that records, you get audit trails, you get transparency, you get um, any kind of like, you know, way of sort of tracking down where things are going wrong. Because as we know, like, no matter how secure you make things, there's always going to be another hole somewhere. Um, and so without that audit trail and without that record keeping, um, you kind of lose out on, on exploits that you know are going to happen somewhere and you need a way of finding out and tracing down what exactly happened. So this is kind of the um, compromise resilience um, to another level. Um, so let's see a little bit about how, oh, there we go. So going back to our vaccine analogy, this is kind of the role of the CDC. So it's great, Pfizer is there, um, the FDA is there, but what really builds trust is a relationship over time with uh, records with uh, data that you know backs up um, the FDA assertions and Pfizer's assertions. So this is kind of the role of that. And so what I really find is that this you know brings things from like you know 90% to 100% and more. Um, so you're able to kind of see that history. You're able to you know it, it provides people with accountability. Um, and so that's the kind of role that I see this playing in the in Toto and Tough um, complementary realm. So let's talk a little bit about what Sixor does in general um, and. There we go. So what we're going to do is kind of start from uh, like a basic principles. And I'll talk a little bit about how it can be used in like the uh, in different, uh, you know, more complex ways. Um, so there's three main components of the ecosystem that I'm kind of going to walk through from just starting from an artifact, which is this, you know, like notebook like thing on the on the left here um, and how you might distribute that in a way that the end user at the bottom over there can check for integrity. Um, so let's start with that artifact. Um, the first step is the actual signing piece of that. So that's going to happen um, with a tool called Cosign. And again, all of these components that I'm talking about are totally modular and like, you know, it's pick and choose, do what you want. So Cosign is a part of this eco a SIG store ecosystem that provides that signing and verification. Um, so it's a really easy uh, signing tool that tries to make, you know, most of the process as automated as possible. So everything you're going to hear about from, you know, here on is happening under the hood. No one needs to know if they don't want to. Um, so you can use it to generate keys. You can, you know, bring your own keys. You can use hardware keys. Um, and what you can do is, you know, with that public and private key, you can, you know, sign a container or, or really co-sign is for container signing. But in the whole six store ecosystem, you could really sign any kind of artifact. Um, so, all right, that's good and well. You can generate that signature and you can give it to the end user and the end user can use the public key um, and signature to do a verification. But now building on top of that, um, part of the difficulty in signing artifacts is managing keys. Um, like key management is a very, very hard problem. We all know that keys get stolen, keys get leaked, keys get published on websites, um, keys get compromised. We know it's just like kind of a fact of nature. So if it's going to happen, um, some ways that Sigster kind of tries to mitigate this problem and, and make it uh, something that developers don't even have to think about um, is with this automated key management piece um, called FullCO. 
So FullCO is this um, PKI system. It's a root certificate authority that is going to uh, live also in the six store ecosystem. Um, and what it does is it's, it's totally free also, totally public, um, is it generates code signing certificates based on an authorized identity provided through like an open ID connect um, flow. So what you end up with is uh, maintainers or distributors can generate a one-time or like ephemeral use uh, key pair. So these public and private key pairs use that to create a signature and then send their public key up to FullCO, um, which FullCO will sign off on, generate a certificate for, and provide that back to you. After that code signing is done, the distributors or maintainers can just throw away their keys. There is no need for key management at all. And what this results in is that verifiers can just simply verify based on that identity. Um, and as long as they check the full CO piece of this. So that's awesome. We don't have to deal with private keys, but now there's one more piece that exists also in conjunction and is kind of necessary with the full CO piece and that's called Recore. So Recore is a transparency log. Um, you may be you know, familiar with this as like a type of ledger, um, but it's also a timestamping service. So what this log contains is basically storage mechanisms for any type of you know signing artifacts. So like maybe this includes just general like container signatures that we have on Cosign. Maybe this includes JAR. Um, maybe this includes RFC three one six one timestamps. Or or maybe this includes Intoto and Tough metadata. Um, so what this allows is anyone can go and upload um, signing artifacts onto this um, with a totally immutable history, which is you know by nature of this transparency log. Um, and it's searchable. So what you basically have provided is a searchable and totally immutable um, record keeping of all the signing that's going on, which is awesome in case someone ever wants to monitor or trace down exactly what happened and when. Um, and also like, you know, in the, in the future, like, you know, you can think of just kind of expanding this out as giving you this whole, you know, global view of the ecosystem and that you can kind of use to build connections between um, different things. So this entire piece um, is kind of how the Cisco ecosystem works in conjunction. But again, we can kind of pick and choose components as we want. Um, so the great part is that like, you know, everything could happen under the hood starting from the cosine flow using all three of these components, keyless signing with full CO um, and verification on the transparency log. But you can also just use, you know, for example, the transparency log to, to um, you know, provide end users that you have with like a transparent way of, you know, uh, saying, yes, you did sign things when you wanted to. And that's exactly what um, Trishank is going to talk, talk about like next with this data dog integration is using um, Recore as a way of um, hosting their Tough and Intoto metadata as just a, a way of saying, hey, we're definitely signing things transparently. So I'll hand this off to you, Trishank. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ashra. There we go. So yes, um, as as Azra alluded to, let's 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 see how this actually all looks in practice. How would you how would you actually do this? And and we did this for the Datadog agent integrations, as I mentioned, the background problem earlier, the motivating problem. And so I'm very I'm very proud, I'm very pleased to say that we were the first in the industry, as far as as far as I can tell, and still the only one, uh, to build a compromised, resilient uh, software supply chain. And so this is what our in total so uh, software supply chain looks like. Um, we don't need to get into the nitty gritty details, but the basic idea is that um, we're basically packaging our integrations as Python wheels, which are basically just zip files containing our source code. And our developers are signing source code checked into GitHub uh, in this case, um, using the YubiKeys, using hardware root of trust. Okay, so you can't, you, you, you can't easily um, 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 find your keys. And so what happens is the CI CD then comes in the middle, packages all that stuff, puts it in the zip file, as, as I say, Python wheels, and then signs everything using, signs all this in total metadata and the Python wheels themselves using top and distributes it to our end users. And crucially, the important thing here is that if you look at the end, transparently what's happening when users install one of these is that um, uh, the agent transparently calls stuff and in total in the background to verify the software supply chain. It checks, for example, that the Python wheel was produced by the CI CD, but on top of that, it actually unzips it and checks the source code was literally signed by one of our developers using the UB keys. That's what gives us compromised resilience here. Even if someone tampers with a CI CD, they can't forge our developer signatures. 
And, and this is the tough uh, distribution model. Uh, again, we don't need to get into the details. Um, it looks complicated, but really, it's just, we're really just trying to load balance metadata here. Uh, we've been collecting, as I said, we've been doing this since uh, uh, 2018, uh, before so software supply chain security was cool. Um, and we have three years um, um, worth of data on, on releasing this um, software, uh, releasing um, uh, this Python builds using, um, and, and along with the associated in total software supply chain. And, and now we're, I'm also pleased to say we're the first in the industry, as far as I can tell, to do transparent compromise resilience, to take it to the next level as Azra was talking about. So we have our developers uh, sitting, some of them sitting in the New York Times building, MAST of course, um, and, and releasing uh, new Python wheels, right? Using the Yubi keys. So, so you, you, you can't exfiltrate, even, even if you get into the laptops, you can't exfiltrate the signing keys. And, and secondly, every signing operation liter literally requires touching your Yubi key. So our developers release a new, new, new source code that needs to be sent out to our users and our CI CD packages them using in Dodo, sending attestations about it. Um, and then everything gets pack, packed together in, in Tuff, using Tuff to securely deliver both to our end users. Um, and then finally, now we're beginning to record um, every single artifact, every new integration that we release on, on Sigtor, on, on Wrecker, so that everyone can query it and see exactly how every single little um, 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 integration was, was produced end to end from our developers to you. So, and, and now Azra will show a very cool demo. All right, so yeah, the purpose of this demo is to talk a little bit about um, you know, Trishank mentioned three years of, of history of putting tough metadata um, and publicly verifying it. But the question is, like, did he really do it for three years? So the question is, can we actually, like, you know, find a history of those three years of um, metadata? So what I'm going to kind of show you is a little demo um, of how a verification on an end user would work uh, using in total tough and Sigster components. So do. All right. So what we have here is the Datadog downloader. Um, so what this does is I'm just showing you from the start, we're starting with a um, trusted root.json in our current metadata. Um, and then what we do is we're going to run a downloader that's going to do tough verification um, and in total verification. Um, so that what we have in, in our resulting uh, metadata files is now verified tough and in total metadata. And you can see I've just printed out the current timestamp that we've retrieved through this download process. And we see we're at version 3000 um, right over here. So now going to our SIG store part of this, what we can do is we can run a search query using Recor um, on all of the tough metadata that's currently on there signed by the current root.json that we just pulled from the downloader. Uh, we find a couple of entries in the last couple of days for this demo. Um, we verify that they currently exist in the log um, just because we don't necessarily trust the index indexing service. Um, and we actually pull that entry from the log, find out its metadata content, and we find out a you know, tough looking piece of metadata of a timestamp role with a version 3000, which matches before. And just to make sure that it really truly does match, um, we can take the hash of that F25C60, as you can see printed below, and it totally matches the one that we downloaded from the verifier. Um, so that's kind of a speed run demo of how this entire process works. But the main idea is that we did it with speed because it should be easy to do. Um, so there's not too much going on for you to deal with, but all these pieces are there for verification and are totally transparent for you to kind of check and click through. Um, so we kind of hope that people start integrating this into their system and making it like, you know, an immutable history for people to kind of search, query, monitor, and also for your own benefit uh, making sure that, you know, no one's signing things on your behalf that shouldn't be there. Um, so, you know, you can make sure that no one's signing with my email ID token um, by checking my Recor log. So Recor is a really cool tool to kind of search and verify and um, pull things and investigate. So now I'm going to hand it off um, back again uh, for some security analysis. Thank you, thank you again, Astra. That was a really cool demo. I especially like how difficult it was to really do all this. It looks onerous, right? Um, all this stuff and in total checks in the background and searching six door. I mean, it looks totally unusable. 
Yep, um, I, I I don't know. We I bet anyone can do it. And if if you want to, uh, like I mean, the the nice part is that it's all scripting. Um, so you know, we all know how I write scripts, which is look at other people's scripts. No, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was the whole point, right? It's to show people actually how easy this really is for end users to do, right? Because we've hidden away, um, a lot of the complexity for for you. Mm -hmm. And but the also nice part is that even though this complexity is hidden, it's totally public. So. Um, mm -hmm. The more skeptical you are, uh, the better. If you wanted to get under the weeds, you you can. Exactly. Uh, cool. So yes, uh, let's ne let's next take a look at the security analysis. What's the bottom line? What do I get for my money here? Well, let's take a look. A new state of the art. What can go wrong? Well, nothing has obviously gone wrong. Life life is good. Um, but when you have a developer key compromise, in theory, yes, malicious source code could be built automatically and distributed. But th th there's, a, there's an important thing here. First, we've significantly increased the bar for attack. So uh, the first thing you can do is to increase the threshold needed for developers to... Um, so for example, you could, you could easily require uh, at least two developers to sign off on exactly the same source code before you even trust installing the integration. And the second thing uh, which, which, which we are already doing, as I, as I mentioned before, is that our developers are using YubiKeys and you can't, you can't run away, the, the keys are generated on a YubiKey and you can't exfiltrate the, the, the signing keys. And, and then two, you literally need to touch the YubiKey in order to authorize every signing operation. It significantly increases the bar for attack. Um, now what happens if, uh, if, if our VCS, in this case, GitHub gets compromised? No problem, don't lose sleep. In fact, we've accidentally uh, detected accidental, uh, you know, um, 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 denial of service attacks here where it looked like an attack, but it wasn't. It's a bug in like, for example, not, not a bug, but a feature in Git, rewriting uh, new lines on, on, from, from Windows, for example. Um, and then there's CICD compromise. Again, don't lose sleep because we always, always, always double check the CICD. We never blindly trust it. We always, the root of trust is basically our developers. Uh, what happens if the image registry gets compromised? Again, um, no, no sleep lost or the key or file server. I think you get the idea by this point. Um, and so some conclusions. Um, too long didn't read. Just use in total tough and six door, okay? To get transparent compromised resilience. That's all you need to remember. You don't need to, you don't need to worry yet about how it works, but this is the basic idea. We want transparent compromised resilience for all, right? And this is how you do it. This is our claim. And um, again, going back to the metaphor of vaccines, just to make things a bit more concrete, in total is like Pfizer and Moderna or J and J telling you exactly how how every one of their vaccine was produced. Um, Tough is like um, the FDA um, telling you why you should trust each of these vaccine makers in the first place, right? So the bootstrapping and trust and secure distribution of these vaccines. And finally, Six Store is like the CDC keeping a permanent transparent record for everybody who wants to walk in and check, how was my vaccine produced? I want to know from end to end. And, and so that's partly part, some, uh, uh, part of the power that Six Store gives you. And now Azra will talk about how, how this is coming to all of us. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about this exciting new development, which um, might not be as new when everyone is actually watching this. Um, but what we are trying to do is bring uh, the benefits of uh, tough trust routes to everyone. Um, so transparent compromise resilience for all. Um, so what we intend to do is uh, sort of integrate um, tough routes that you can kind of make yourself on GitHub um, and have our trust route, like by bootstrapping our own trust route, you can build your own trust route um, through this GitHub approval process. Um, and that will like naturally integrate with uh, SIG store tools. So for example, let's say you had a project like for example, Distroless, um, and they wanted to use tough or maybe use Intoto too um, for their supply chain and publish uh, metadata based on you know, their, their current layout and have people in Cosign actually verify the entire thing end to end. Um, so what they can simply do is just do a Cosign, like if, if I was an end user, I would just use Cosign to use a verification and then point that and pin that at a certain type of delegate, which is a delegation from our own SIG store route to the distrolysis route. Um, and that way, as an end user, I don't have to deal with um, finding the right metadata. I don't have to deal with, um, you know, pulling the current metadata, I just know that I'm going to pin on this delegate that is trusted by SIGStore, which in turn I trust. 
Um, and then are, am I like, you know, single line able to verify an image? Um, so that's the kind of idea there. Um, we basically want to bring trust routes to everyone and make it so that projects can transparently and openly um, utilize all of these tools in conjunction without having to set everything up themselves. Um, so now I'm also going to hand it off to Santiago for some other improvements. So uh, lastly, in the research front and like the North Star front, we want to do three major thrusts, three major pushes. One of them is to integrate projects such as Keyline to have a hardware root of trust semantics into the tracking of uh, supply chain metadata so that you can know every single thing that was used uh, in the operation of uh, a supply chain action. Uh, the second one is to actually start discovering these complex interrelationships between software as it is used to produce more software. So we can track how something, how a software artifact was partaking in the creation of a new container, for example, and uh, start understanding how this has uh, influences in the trustworthiness of a particular software artifact. And finally, with all of the metadata that we're collecting, we can start creating data science-based solutions to uh, identify the threat surface in the global software supply chain and start uh, making more proactive actions to reduce our attack surface or, or vulnerability surface. And uh, of course, this is all work that's not only uh, the three of us, but uh, people from multiple organizations that are working very hard to make this a reality. We wanted to give them a shout out uh, in this slide. Um, and without fur further ado, I think uh, we're ready for a Q&A, aren't we? Yes, I think so. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate your time. Thanks.